What's up guys, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today I'm going to teach you how to make security cameras in Roblox Studio. So let's get started. First of all, we want to make all of these security cameras. So I'm just going to create a bunch of walls really quick. And just like that, I've created all of the walls for the game. So now we can go ahead and set up our security cameras. So what I'm going to do is create a part just by pressing the part button up here. And then I'm going to scale it in a way that allows us to see the orientation. So right click show orientation indicator. And then you can just scale it to make it like long ways like this. Okay. And then I'll just color this uh, like red just so we can know that's a security camera. And now we can go ahead and position it. So the way our camera is going to face is we want to have it facing the way that um, the camera is going to look. So this like orientation indicator should be facing wherever you want to look. But there is a way easier way to do this uh, rather than just rotating it manually. If we go down here to the command bar, we can actually just type in workspace dot current camera dot C frame. Okay. And then we just can change the part C frame. So workspace dot part dot C frame. Oops. Part dot C frame equals camera C frame. And as you can see, it rotates it and positions it perfectly to where our camera is looking. So we can actually just go over here into another place. We can duplicate the part and just name this like cam2. And then change the workspace.part down here to cam2. And as you can see, it positions it. So this is how we're going to set up our security cameras, just repeating this process. So I'll just go into this corner right here. Hold shift to make the camera go slower and position it in a way that allows us to see the entire room. Then I'm going to duplicate cam 2, name it cam 3, and just go right here and change it. Perfect. So I'm going to repeat this around like 10 more times and just make a bunch of cameras. Okay, so now that we have all the cameras that we need, what I'm going to do is make sure all these are named uh, properly. So I'll name this one camera 1 because this will be the first camera. And then I'm also just going to make sure the middle of these parts are not clipping through the walls. So the edges can be clipping, but just not the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure of that. As you can see, this one is kind of clipping, so I'm just going to move it out a little bit. Change the move increment to just uncheck it, and then you can just drag out. As you can see, this one right here is clipping through the wall, so just drag it down. Okay, so now that we have all the cameras set up, what we're going to do is name them properly. So we're going to kind of just organize it. So go ahead and click on one of the cameras at the top and then hold shift and click the one at the bottom. And now we can go ahead and say, uh, group these as a folder. So just press control alt G to group it as a folder, or you can right click and group as a folder that way. Then I'll just name this cameras. And I'm going to go through these and I'm going to change the name from camera one to just one. Uh, the reason we had it as camera one was just because down here, if we set it to one, it just bugs it out and it's kind of annoying. So we'll just change these to one, then 10, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine. This will be so we can just go through each camera. Now click on the folder and then we're just going to anchor them by just selecting all of these and pressing anchor. Then we're also going to set the transparency of all these to one so they're invisible and set them to can collide false. Or you can just keep them uh, normal if you just want to have it like that. Uh, that is another way to do it. But if you want to make these invisible, set can collide to false and transparency to one. Now we're going to make the security chair. So what I'm going to do is go over here and I'm just going to go into workspace and insert a vehicle seat or not a vehicle seat, a regular seat. Now that we have the regular seat in here, what we're going to do is just drag it and use orientation indicator just to see like where we're looking. Then I'll just face it this way, I guess, and we'll make it look kind of good. We'll just make like a screen that we can look at. Uh, this part is kind of optional, but it will make it look a little bit better, I guess. So yeah, just imagine this as the screen that we're looking at. Now what we're going to do is click on the seat right here and make sure both of these are anchored. And right here, what we're going to do 
is add a script. And then we'll get the seat. So local seat equals script.parent. And then we want to check whenever somebody sits in the seat. So the event that we can use is get property change signal occupant and then connect a function to that event. So whenever the someone sits in the chair or leaves the chair, uh, we'll run this code. Then we're going to get the occupant by doing local occupant equals seat.occupant. And this is the humanoid that's sitting in the seat. So we're going to be able to get the player's character from this. Um, but we want to do this on the client. So what we're going to do, change this script right here, the run context to client. So it runs on the player's computer and not the Roblox computer or the server. Okay. So now what we're going to do is get the player up here by doing local player equals game.players.local player. And we'll also get the camera by doing local camera equals workspace dot current camera. And then what we're going to do is get the player character when the seats changed or when the occupants change. So local character equals player dot character. And we'll also get the humanoid by doing local humanoid equals character and character find for shell, which is a humanoid. So what we're doing right here is we're checking if the character exists. And if it ex exists, then we're going to look for the humanoid. Otherwise, this would error um, because we're not checking if the character exists but this is the right way to do it okay now all we have to do is check if the occupant is equal to the humanoid and if it is then we can go ahead and like do the camera stuff uh else we want to fix the camera so the way we're going to do this camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot custom so what this does right here is if the occupant is not the humanoid and we should also check if occupant is equal to nil um, actually we actually want to make a variable for the last occupant too just so we can know that the player is the one who sat in it so local last occupant equals nil and this will just make the occupant um, nil for now just so we can see we can also just leave it like this i'll put it as nil just so you guys can see uh so we're going to check is if occupant is equal to humanoid and Last occupant is, it, well, we don't need to check here. We need to check right here. Else if last occupant is equal to humanoid, then we'll set the camera type. So basically, we're just checking if the uh, last player to sit in it was our player. And if it was, then we'll set the camera type to normal. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is because this is going to check if other players sit in it. And it's might bug out our game like if we set the camera type so that's uh just avoiding an error uh now what we're gonna do is we're checking if occupants you've killed a humanoid and if it is then we're gonna set last occupant to humanoid and then we can go ahead and do all our stuff okay so what i'm gonna do is and call an enable gui function and we'll make that right here and this will allow us to switch to the cameras okay and down here, uh, we're setting the camera type to custom, and I'm going to disable the GUI. Disable GUI, just like that. Okay. Uh, now the GUI, we're going to go ahead and make that in starter GUI. So I'm going to create a GUI. Ignore GUI and set and reset on spawn. Uh, disabled. Actually, we can enable reset on spawn. And then we're going to go ahead and just add a couple buttons. So I'm going to add one text button. It'll be down here. We'll change the size to 0 0.250, 0 0.10. And this is just so we can scale it properly. Uh, as you can see, we want to use the scale size and not the offset. Otherwise, this won't scale on all devices. So I'll just scale this down a little bit. And we'll drag it over here. Change the anchor point to 0 0.5. And then I'll change this to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.098, just like that. And then this one will be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.98. And this will kind of make it uh, sorted out. Okay. Uh, so now that we have these, we're going to change this one to next. And we're going to change this one to last. So these buttons right here are going to allow us to switch the cameras. Then we can go ahead and name these. And then we can add a local script to this. Okay. And then right here, what we're going to do in this script, we have to go back here. I'm going to drag this GUI 
into replicated storage first. Excellent, we can just keep that in storage away. We'll name this security cams. And all we're going to do is disable it. And then we're going to enable it um, in the GUI. So let's go ahead and get the player GUI right here. So local player GUI equals player, wait for child, player GUI. And then local security cams equals player GUI, wait for child, security cams. Okay. And then security cams, we can just enable it. And security cams right here, enabled equals false. And if you want to sort this, uh, just there's no reason to even make a function really. Thought we we're going to do something else with it, but we can just replace these and just remove the clutter. So now you can see right here we're setting the last document to the humanoid and setting the security cams enabled to true. And then this one we're just kind of resetting it. Okay. Uh, now what we can do is get the player GUI with this local script. And this is going to actually manage the cameras. So we're going to do local GUI equals script.parent. Local last button equals GUI wait for child last. Local next button equals GUI wait for child next. And then we're going to get the camera. Okay. Now what we can do is make a function for next camera and a function for last camera. And then, of course, we need to get the security camera. So let's do local camera parts equals workspace wait for child cameras and then get children. Okay. And then in the next cam, uh, we want to make uh, an op or a value right here. Local index equals one. Okay. And then what we can do is local max index equals hashtag camera parts. And this is getting the length of the table. So however many camera parts there are, this will be the max index. Okay. Then what we're going to do is to get the next camera, we're just going to do um, index plus equals one. If index is greater than max index, then index equals one. So if it's greater than one or if it's greater than 10, then it's just going to go back to one. So it loops over and over. Last camera, we're just going to do the opposite of this index minus equals one and if index is less than one then index equals max index okay and then we can go ahead and connect these functions so last button dot mouse button one click connect last camera and next button dot mouse button one click connect next button okay and then right here we're just going to make a function for updating the camera so function update camera and we're going to do camera dot c frame equals camera parts Find first child index dot C frame. Okay, and then we're going to call this at the bottom right here of both functions. So now we're good. We can go ahead and play this right here. Press play here just to spawn at the security camera place. And we can go right here. And once we send the seat, as you can see, it puts us here. Uh, we can press next and last, but we have an issue. We are calling find first child uh, on the table. So what we need to do is do local camera parts folder equals workspace wait for child cameras. And then change this right here to camera parts folder. And then right here we can change this to camera parts folder. Okay, awesome. So now this will actually fix that issue. What we were doing is we were calling find first child on a table and you can't do that. It has to be on an object in the game. All right, uh, now what we can do is we can, once the GUI is enabled, we can update the camera. So GUI dot uh, get, or get property chain signal, and then enabled, connect function, update camera, uh, but we want to check if GUI dot enabled. Okay. Uh, also, we want to change the camera type to scriptable, and I think we did that in here. Did we? No, we should do that. Camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot script tool. Okay. Now we can go right here, and if we send the seat, as you can see, it puts us in the security cams, and we can toggle each one, just like so. And we can go last, 
And if you want to add a label, we can do that. Uh, let's go ahead and enable this. Add a text label. And then we'll just set this to the middle. And then just copy the position of this one. Like that. Uh, no, right there. Like that. And then we want to scale this into the middle. There we go. Then we can even change the size to like 0 0.10, 0 0.10. I think, yeah. And then a little bit less, actually. Yeah, like that. That should be good. We'll change the background transparency to 1. Change the color to white. And then this will just be like the camera. Like that. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and change the text label. An update camera right here, all we'll do is get the label. So local label equals GUI wait for child text label, which is the name of this. And then we'll do label.text equals index. Okay. And now we can go ahead and disable this. So now we play the game. And we go over here. We can go ahead and sit down and go through this. And as you can see, it shows the cameras. Awesome. This is really cool. Uh, it's a really simple system. And let's go ahead and just optimize it a little more because some of this code is kind of bad. And we'll just comment it out so I can explain to you guys what we're actually doing here. Okay, so uh, we don't actually have to change the camera type in here. We can change, we can do this inside of the GUI. So right here, if we set the GUI enabled, we want to set the camera type here just to be sure. And then uh, we can also, th this is fine right here. Everything in here is good. Uh, and yeah, right here, everything should be good here. Well, we could even like edit the GUI in this script. Uh, but it's okay. We don't really need to do that now. Everything's already scripted. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you guys want to download this uh, camera system, I'll just put it in the description down below. You can go ahead and download it. Uh, it'll be linked on Roblox. And also, I'll leave the scripts in the description down below if you want to do that too. Okay? Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and join my Discord server if you need scripting help or just want to make new friends. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.